Hey guys, this is Tim, and this is Tim's tank. Um, I thought I'd give you an update on the tank. It's been a couple weeks, and uh, I've been promising for a long time to give a rundown on the equipment that I have, the tank and equipment I'm using with it currently. So let's get that first, get to that first, and then I'll give you a little update on what's been going on with the tank. It's a 100-gallon SCA tank. Uh, it's rimless. Uh, but it has Euro braces on it, which I like because my last rimless tank didn't have Euro bracing on it. And uh, if you, many of you probably know if you've followed me at all in my videos that that broke open and that's what led ultimately to me getting this tank, this 100 gallon. So that's a whole other story that I really don't want to go back into right now. That was, and that was almost exactly a year ago to be honest. So this tank uh, I've had for up and running for about 10 months total time. I had to, well, there was one period where we moved, I actually had to move this uh, tank over that period uh, from one house to another because we bought a new home. And I uh, had to break it down, put it in a temp, put everything in a temporary tank for a while and then set it back up again in the new house there. So we're up and running um, uh, and going a few months since, everything, since we got everything put back together and the tanks. So right now it's going pretty, pretty good. Can't complain too much. Let's talk about the lights. The lights, uh, I use two Radeon Gen 3 Pros that I like a lot, and I'm using the Ecotec arm um, uh, uh, mounting brackets ra or, ra or rack for it, if, whatever you want to call it. Uh, generally speaking, I'm pretty much happy with the Radeons. Uh, uh, they might do a little bit better in certain areas on the tank. Uh, there are some areas that have some, sh areas that have some shadow on it, that sometimes I think I would like to find, uh, try some T5s and additional, as additional to maybe get rid of those uh, shadowed spaces or might try the diffusers on the, on the uh, Gen 3s uh, to see if that would uh, pick them up. But otherwise, I like the flexibility of LEDs, you know. I live in El Paso, Texas, and it gets really hot in the summertime, and I, with the LEDs, I, you know, I rarely get a temp. I might get hit 82, maybe. That would be the, the hottest I ever do. I usually, even in the hottest days of summer here in the desert, I only usually get to maybe 81. Usually I stay around 80 with the LED. So for that, you know, uh, we keep the temperature. Uh, the, my lighting doesn't affect my temperature, in other words, even though I live in a pretty hot climate here. Um, using the MP40 for Flow Ecotech, obviously I must like Ecotech products, and I do. It's a quality company, they make, they make quality products. And, but I do have a gyre, as a matter of fact, it's sitting, I changed today and I just have a gyre 230 that's sitting on the back that I keep going back and forth with. There's things about the gyre that I like and there's things about the MP40 that I like. I just haven't totally made up my mind which one I like the best. I use the MP40, as you can probably see right now, uh, um, it, it's, and it's just quiet. It's just dead quiet. And that's one thing that the gyre doesn't give you. It's not, it's not that it's really extremely loud, but it's, it's just noticeable to me, maybe because I was, had the MP40 before that. But uh, uh, it's just, just really quiet. And, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I've got a little, I just have the one MP40 on, and you can see the standing wave I get. That's running about 60%. It gives me a pretty good standing wave, even with just the one MP40. And so I like using the pulsing mode on that, uh, and that's that's what I and uh, a couple I kind of and you can it's really uh, with the uh, uh, the the uh, Ecotech setup it's really easy to you, you change your 24-hour program around on your uh, lighting and and with your flow on your on the uh, MP40 to get it whatever you like in particular it's pretty it's pretty easy to set up on the Wi-Fi and. Uh, I just, I just like, I, so far, I'm probably, if you would ask me today which one I like the best, the gyro or the MP40, I like the MP40. Okay, so when it gets good flow, and I have mostly about 98% softies and LPS, um, and they're doing pretty good, as you can see, and uh, uh, the, uh, between the lighting and the flow, so I don't have, you know, I can't really complain too much about that, so. Um, <clears throat> I use a Vectra, uh, that's what I have. My return pep is a Vectra M1. I like that a lot too. And of course it's programmable, dead quiet, <laughs> you know, 
very very nice pump. I've, I have a backup a M, M, a Vector M1 as a backup also. Uh, I bought one that was used online when a guy was selling it, so I had to have a backup. And so, and when I clean one, I can switch it out. Um, and the sump, um, it, um, it's, a, it's about, there's probably about 20 gallons in there, total water. When you add that to probably uh, my tank, when you take out for rock and sand and so forth from the 100 gallons, there's probably about 80 gallons of water in the tank. There's 20 gallons of sump in the sump. And, uh, and uh, so it probably gives me a total of about 80 gallons, or excuse me, 100 gallons total in, between the sump and, and the tank. I'm using a, uh, a uh, classic octopus skimmer. It's got the motor mounted under or inside of, of the skimmer instead of the external. Uh, which is a space saver type thing, which works out really good. And I just, it's, it may not be the best, but it's, it certainly does the job for me anyway. Skims well, and I just, it's just, um, it's just a good skimmer. It's rated for 150 gallons, and I'm running about 100, so it does real good for me. If you can see in the back, maybe you can't real well, but I'm not using any filter socks anymore. I used to, but now I've replaced those, and I'm just using some, um, like filter floss or filter pad in there instead. And I'm just, every about three or four days, I just pull that out and throw it away and put a new one in there. I just got to start tired of dealing with filter socks. And we might talk more about that later. <laughs> but um, I use a uh, reactor that I run Kimi Pure, and sometimes I run uh, Clear FX, I actually put into the reactor. Um, um, and over here, you can see, is I use, I'm using, when I'm using a carbon, I put it in a, a bag and run it right there. Um, I'm using a, uh, the Apex Neptune AT, ATO or ATK, which for the most part I like. <laughs> it does a pretty good job for my ATO, for my auto, auto top off. I use a dose. I've got a dose dosing pump that I like a lot and for my calcium and alkalinity. And obviously I've got a, you can see up under there, I've got an Apex Neptune, the older one. I don't have the newer model. Um, so that's a quick rundown on, ba on basically on the equipment. I don't have enough space under the tank for my ATO tank. So I've got one that I've run beside the tank. I wish I had enough room under the tank so I could get under, but I don't. So I've got one, that's about a 15 gallon ATO tank that sits next to the, the uh, display tank. Um, if any of you saw the last video I put out, <laughs> um, you'll notice that there's a certain uh, fish that's still in there that I threatened to get out, and so far I haven't. And he's right over to the right. Right there, one spot, uh, fox face. He's about uh, five, I'm saying he's at least five, five and a half inches long. He might be six. Um, but he <laughs> recently took to liking to eat my Zoas. And so, uh, particularly he liked my Tubbs Blue and some, <laughs> a couple other Zoas a lot. And I was, uh, at one time, if I could have caught him one day, I, I would have. But for the moment, I even got a fish trap, if I'm going to trap him and get him out. So, uh, but I don't know why I keep putting it off. I guess I just like him. He's a good fish. He's a colorful fish. He also eats a, a lot of algae in the tank. So it's just that, you know, what are you going to do when he starts eating your zoas? You don't have much choice. So I guess I'm just prolonging. Uh, the inevitable that he's going to have to come out of the tank. If for nothing else, he may have to come out just because of his size. He's just getting too big for the tank. And he would probably be better suited for like a six-foot uh, a six foot tank, giving more room to swim. But, but uh, to be honest with you, I'm just procrastinating putting him out. I think since I'm, I don't really think I mentioned in my last video, I do have a couple other new fish. There's an orange back fairy wrasse in there. And somewhere in here... Is a redhead or a solen wrasse that I picked up also. So I've got about 
Uh, I guess that puts me at four RASs now. And obviously I must like RAS, and I do. <laughs> um, and, and all those RASs are very, um, oh, I, well, I have the uh, Melanaris, and I already had the yellow Chorus RAS. And all of them do well in the tank, they get along well together, don't cause any problems, so uh, I, I just like, like the RASs a lot. They get rid of little creatures that you don't want in your tank, very helpful in the tank. Um, um, my corals, I mentioned I'm mostly softies and stuff, and as you can see, I think I'm doing a pretty good job with, uh, with them. Uh, I, there's some candy canes down there, I didn't mention those before. I've got some uh, nuclear green pallies that are, took a long time to start taking off. And a, lot of, a lot of guys don't like pallies, but my wife likes those, especially this one, because it's that nuclear green. They're, they are pretty colorful. But if you don't watch it, they'll just take off and cover everything eventually. So I've got it on a rock separate. And next to it's a, a hammer coral that I bought recently. Uh, the Monty, still going good. Branching, GPS. That's a big rock full of uh, fire and ice zoas. And uh, some more. I, this, I really like. I, when I got this, uh, there's only this, it's like a frog spawn, but it's really radiant. I mean, it's bright, it just glows. A uh, frog spawn. Uh, I bought this when I was out of town probably about a year and a half ago, or maybe two years ago. I only had a couple heads on it. Well, it's, it's grown like crazy, so it's, it's big. Next to that's a hammer, and next to that's another form of, uh, some people call this like an octo spawn. It's a little bit different than a regular frog spawn. Has uh, several polyps on the on the end of the tip, each tip. Got some more red pallies down here. Um, uh, Ghani, got that uh, when I was out of town. It's going. It's been doing just fine. Right? Uh, in the past, when we had Ghani, we had the green, more traditional uh, known Ghanis, and they didn't last very long at all. But this one's uh, a year and a half or so, and it's still doing good. So, and some more frog spawn. And the uh, uh, elegance coral, Duncan, uh, and some more of that uh, frog spawn I was talking about before. I just uh, actually when I was moving around one time, I I just accidentally uh, bumped off a couple heads, so I got it down here on the end. I need to move that around. I need I've got a green Monty that's growing here, but it's real slow because it's just not getting enough light. I got to change that. And a, uh, a uh, green, green polyp uh, toadstool, Tyree green toadstool, that's uh, growing pretty good. I don't get real good extension out of the polyps, uh, but it's, it's growing pretty good. And that's probably the best. Uh, I think I hit most of the corals that are in there and how they're doing. So the tank is, is doing pretty well. Uh, a couple things that I uh, tried recently that I like a lot. Um, uh, to help the tank, or in addition, is uh, uh, I'm using Bina Reef from Bina Pets, and I didn't think I'd like that, but uh, I really, I really like that. I kind of broadcast feed with it, and I've really been enjoying that. And um, uh, seems to be doing the corals. The corals seem to like it a lot too, so I'm using that. Um, I also one big thing I did that I was having so much trouble with diatoms. And so when I did an ICP testing, uh, where one of the, uh, I, I used the um, Aquamedic one, uh, and, but I found this on other ICP tests. In the, everywhere I've been in El Paso, well, not everywhere I've been, I've only been in two houses, but in each home, I always have trouble with silica, which we know, if you've been in reefing very long, you, you know that silica, well, generally speaking, you're going to get a lot of diatoms with silica. And so I tried uh, a Super Silica Buster uh, RO, uh, uh, a second uh, RO on my uh, um, um, RO uh, water. Uh, um, and, and with this, putting the second one on there, adding more, in other words, having two RO uh, um, canisters at the, on, on there, it seems to really have knocked down, the, hopefully, the, the amount of silica that's in the tank that's been producing the, uh, the diatoms. I'm going to run another ICP test now. But I don't, before I was like, it was almost every other day. 
uh, trying to get rid of the uh, diatoms on the glass and I don't, you know, maybe once a week now is all I do. Uh, and I don't, and, and as far as cleaning the glass and haven't had much trouble with diatoms lately at all. So maybe that's something that's working for me or maybe it's a combination of the Bin and Reef and the RO, uh, extra RO uh, canister on the, on my RO filter that's, that's making a difference. But anyway, so I think that's it for now. Uh, I still haven't made up my mind on the fox face. Uh, we'll have to see how this goes. He, it, I, maybe one thing that's kind of prolonging it is he's, he's actually stopped eating any any uh, uh, <laughs> any corals lately, um, and we'll, we'll see we'll see how it how it does and where we go with that. But I've got a feeling he's just going to have to eventually go, no matter what I do. So. Everybody take care. If you haven't subscribed and you, you'd like to keep following along with me, hit the subscribe button and hit the like. Um, and hit that bell. That'll tell you when I put out a new video. And um, uh, you all just take care. If you're reefers, or, uh, uh, continued success with your reef tank. And if you're people who just like looking at reef tanks, keep following along. Keep following all the channels here on, on YouTube that have reef tanks. And take it easy. We'll see you the next time.